Oh man. oh, man. Nice to have you guys with us. I'm sorry that I'm going to do this to you again, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, we spent many, many, many weeks uh, on the teachings of Islam and so forth. Uh, I think it was about three months, approximately. Uh, but there were some things. How many were with us two Rosh Chodesh ago? Not last Rosh Chodesh, but two Rosh Chodesh ago, when I started a teaching on Matthew 24, remember? And it was called A New Look at Matthew 24 in Light of the End Time Beast. So, first of all, I want to apologize because we're talking more about Islam, and it seems like it's a subject that we kind of got past. Okay, we did a lot of teaching and discussing on Islam for 30, no, for three months, yeah. So, we don't want to be a dead horse, but on the other hand, there are things that I didn't cover in that teaching. Um, now, for those of you who missed the first part of that teaching, you can find that teaching in the video library, the DVD uh, video lending library. If you're a visitor here with us, then some of the things that I'm going to share with you don't make sense. Okay, They're not going to make sense. You, you, you may not have ever seen this before. Um, so give yourself a little grace. I mean, you know, it's okay. <laughs> uh, for the rest of you, you'll, some of you will say, well, we, we, we understand the things about the end time beast, but I'm going, to I'm going to try to make it interesting, and I'm not going to do a lot of preaching or teaching. I don't want to throw a lot of new things at you and just throw them at you quickly so you can absorb them um, and say, oh, okay, that I understand. Oh, I've never seen that before. Okay, so, but for those of you who are really interested in the whole uh, understanding of Islam being the end time kingdom, the beast of Revelation, and Daniel chapter 9, we have that available in tapes over there for free, and on the internet you can order your own set. So having said that, we'll uh, call this message part two, a new look at Matijahu 24, in light of the end time beast. A new look at Matijahu 24, in light of the end time beast. So please share with me the Matijahu or Matthew 24. Um, and let's start with verse 15. Again, as a teacher who really wants to try to help people understand the word of Yahweh 10, I see so many new faces here, and my natural tendency is to want to, as a teacher, to cover three months of teaching in one week and to go back instead of going forward. I can't do that. It's not possible. So there's going to be a lot of holes. It's going to, it's going to, some of you are going to see this as a piece of Swiss cheese with a lot of holes that need to be plugged. But I can't help that. Okay. So please forgive me before we get started. Um, Matthew Java 24, 15. Part 2. A new look at Matthew 24 in light of the end time beast, which you all know to be radical Islam or the Islamic system. When you therefore see the abomination of desolation, verse 15, Matijahu 24, spoken of by Daniel the Navi, standing in the Beit HaMikdash, whoever reads, let him understand. Now this is a clear reference to the Islamic anti-Mashiach, who will enter not only the um, rebuilt temple in the future, but he will spread, according to Daniel 9.27, he will spread the desolation to the abomination of desolation. And what did we learn the abomination of desolation was? The al -Aqsamat. So the anti mashiach allows Israel to rebuild the temple, then walks into the temple and desecrates the altar and commands that the sacrifices cease, then he spreads that abomination into the corner of the Temple Mount, or the al Mosque, the abomination of desolation, that is already what? Standing. You understand that? There's an abomination of desolation already standing there, and he spreads the desolation further. Yeshua said, when you see, meaning believers will see, he's saying you, the church, will not be raptured, because A, there is no church outside the historic people of Israel. If you're a believer, you're part of the commonwealth of Israel. 
and B, he says, when you see, when you read, meaning when the great tribulation is unfolding, you will be on earth to see these things, and you will be on earth, and you better be reading Daniel and not Sports Illustrated. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Because if you're reading Sports Illustrated, you will be easily deceived. You've got to be plugged into the word of Yahweh in these last times. Okay. So the abomination of desolation that now exists on in the al Mosque will spread into the rebuilt temple where the anti-Mashiach will cause the sacrifice to cease and he will declare himself to be not Eloha, but to have the power of Eloha, meaning I am Eloha in the sense that I can damn men's souls and that I can um, let man live the power of life and death. Now, we know that this is radical Islam, this is the Islamic end time beast here, because we know Yeshua says that the, the reason I'm talking about the abomination is because I want you to be aware of what's coming in the earth. So I want you to read Daniel. Isn't that what Yeshua said? I want you to read Daniel. What in Daniel? If we go to 927, that's a talk, that is the scripture reference that Yeshua speaks of, the abomination that make it desolate. Page number, please, if you have it, for Daniel 927. 386, thank you. And he will confirm the break, the covenant, with many for one week. That's the uh, confirming the Egyptian, Jordanian, Israeli peace agreement. He will not make a new covenant, but rather he will confirm the existing roadmap to peace. And in the middle of the Great Tribulation, or the last seven weeks, the week of years, he will cause the sacrifice in the rebuilt temple to cease. On the wing, or the corner of abomination, he will be the one making it desolate to complete the end of the Olam Hazeh, the end of this world, which has been determined to be ended by the one who, Yahweh, who allows this thing to take place, the abomination of desolation, and the one who's laying waste the temple mount, the rebuilt temple, and causes the abomination of desolation. So Yeshua said, I want you to understand that Matthew 24, the end time chapter, of a prophetic apocalyptic events is not to scare you, it's not to frighten you, it's not to make you worry, it's not to make you nervous, but it is given to you so that you will have understanding and so that you will have insight into the things that are coming upon the earth. And so you'll know who your enemy is. Now Yeshua identifies Islam here if we stay with the program. Those of you who heard part one, two Rosh Hashanah years ago, you know beyond the shadow of a doubt because the shofar was blowing and sounding and every three minutes, every 30 seconds. We know this is long, we don't have to debate it. Those of you who are coming in or visiting here with us today, you may have doubts, you may, may have been taught that it's the mark of the beast, it's the Catholic Church, and the uh, computer chip and all that nonsense. Well, you know, it depends how much you want to know the hungry for the truth. But we'll feed you if you want to hunger and thirst after righteousness, and we'll allow Yeshua to feed you through us. Yeshua warns us to read so we know about the abomination of desolation spreading um, when, and so we can be a keen, a keen and aware of what Islam is doing. Now let's verse, read verse 16. How many are ready to take a ride? Come on. Hey. Uh, let's try that again. How many are ready to really take a snowmobile ride here? <laughs> you know, the 